Hi guys, Buildzoid here, and today we're going to be taking a look at uh, controlling the core, vo uh, core and HPM voltage on RX Vega uh, GPU, on reference RX Vega cards with the Elmore EVC2. Though the theory should also apply to custom RX Vegas as well. Um, but anyway, so yeah, uh, reference RX, uh, so here we're using a reference RX Vega 64. If you're wondering why the setup is so janky, uh, this card is, I got it as fan mail with a bunch of liquid damage. Apparently it didn't work when it got sent to me. I've cleaned it up. I think there was like a couple components that I ended up re replacing because the corrosion was quite bad. It's been a while since I last messed with this card. But anyway, uh, it still has like a weak HDMI display output. Um, and, uh, I can't get it to actually output into my capture card. So... Because of that, um, I'm just, you know, we're, we're stuck with pointing the webcam at the at the monitor, but uh, uh, yeah. So, you can see we have the, the card in the system here, uh, RX Vega 64, um, currently at 1.2 volts because, uh, if we zoom out, uh, I've maxed out the little voltage dial over here, right? If I lower it, um, which that's, uh, no, that's fine. Lower it, voltage goes down, raise it, voltage goes up, nice and simple. But the problem is, it only goes up to 1.2 volts. Um, and if you're pushing these cards on, say, dry ice or water cooling, or, well, better cooling than, the, like, a, a blower heatsink, because mine's currently on the blower um, of a Frontier Edition, which, like, it's the same freaking heatsink. <laughs> it doesn't make a difference. It's still terrible. Um... Well, yeah, so if you're if you're on proper cooling, 1.2 volts is not enough volts. So uh, you might want to get extra voltage, and you can with the EVC2. So the thing about Vega, though, is that, uh, unfortunately, the driver is extremely chatty. Um, so it is constantly talking to the voltage controller on the card over the I2C interface. Um, and so... If we just go to the I2C1, um, which is the, the header that I'm using on my EVC2, right? Um, I have an older version of the EVC2, so yours is not going to look like that anymore. But anyway, so we go over to I2C1, and I hit find device. Uh, yeah, it's going to fail. Uh, if I hit it again, it's just not going to get anywhere because the, the driver is constantly talking to the voltage controller. And so... Uh, any You just can't talk to the card at all. You, you just can't. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to shut down and go into the BIOS because there's no GPU drivers in the BIOS. Well, not like the the kind of not the kind of drivers that constantly talk to the voltage controller at least. So I'm going to boot up. I'm going to land in the BIOS. And now if we hit the find devices function, it's going to fail once and then it's going to work. <laughs> there. So now it found our controller and so we have our IR35217 and you might be tempted to use all of this lovely functionality right here, but I recommend you don't do that because it has a tendency of crashing the voltage controller. Um, yeah, Vega is fun. So the way you actually want to get uh, want, want to change the core voltage at this point is you're going to set the address here to 30 because you can see that our IR35217 is on address 30, right? Like it sa says it right there. Um, wait. Like, it says it right there, 30. So we're going to set our address to 30. We're going to leave the mode in SMBus. Uh, we're going to set the command to E1, because E1 is the offset register for vCore, um, and the oscilloscope is currently hooked up to the vCore rail. So now we can send, like, an offset of 2. Um, so we're just going to write that, and you can see the voltage uh, jump, you know, uh, went up a little. So if we send, like, a 11... Uh, we can write that, and the voltage goes up a lot. Um, so the way this works is this is hexadecimal, so if I send like an A, um, the, we get slightly less voltage, right? So this is hexadecimal, um, and basically whatever value you punch into there gets multiplied by 6.25 millivolts, and that gives you the voltage offset. So like A is uh, 10, so that's going to be six, uh, 62.5 millivolts of offset. Uh, if we punch in a 0... Uh, it's going to drop us back down to zero offset. Um, now, there's also negative offsets. Um, I don't know why you'd want to use them, because the driver lets you set the voltage. Like, you can lower the voltage once you're in the operating... Like, you can lower the voltage in the operating system. So, I don't know why you'd want to use the voltage offset, like, the negative voltage offsets. And also, they're kind of awkward to get to, because uh, it's like... I think it's the upper range of the... 
uh, values that you can send to the register that actually translate into like negative offsets. So yeah, I, I don't remember, but uh, I think up to like 127, um, the offsets are all positive or something like that. Yeah, I think it's up to around 127. So yeah, and then past that point, it like rolls over and it starts going negative. But anyway, you're probably not going to need that much voltage offset like ever. I mean, honestly, like a 20, right? That's like, what is that? That's like 200 millivolts of offset almost. Because actually, if you want to do the conversions to from, because this is all in hexadecimal. So gonna, do I have the calculator? Is this, yeah, we got the calculator. Okay, ta-da. So we're just gonna set the calculator to programmer and uh, why it's not unlocked. So we're gonna unlock that. There we go. So we got our calculator out. And now if you want to like calculate how much of an offset you're setting. So it, like I just punched in 20. So that's an offset of 32 times 6.25, uh, 6.25, uh, 6 uh, which is a lot. That's gonna be like, yeah, it's a lot. <laughs> we'll just leave it at that. So that's 32 times 6.25. Yeah, so yeah, so that's 200 millivolts, which makes sense. Um, all right, and then if I wanted to offset the voltage by, uh, like, let's say I wanted to offset the voltage by, like, 400 millivolts, uh, we would divide that by 6.25, so that gives us 64, so then we go to Programmer, and we punch in 64, and we get 40, and so, uh, am I gonna... Yeah, I think the card will survive that. Bam, and now it went out of range, because we're at uh, 1.35 volts now. So, yeah, so you can do this, all the, so that's, that's all very well and good. We can do this, oh, I, the oscilloscope was covered up. I'm so, man, imagine if the capture card just bloody worked. <laughs> anyway, um... Yeah, so you get the idea. You can you can move the voltage up and down, and you just kind of need to do some awkward hexadecimal conversions. Now, for the uh, offset for the HBM voltage, you just use the E2 command. Um, so yeah, you just you just use E2 instead of E1, um, and that's HBM. Now, unfortunately, I don't have any HBM voltage. Uh, mo like, yeah, I'm not hooked up anything to monitor the HD uh, HBM voltage right now. Because in my experience, the HBM really doesn't scale much with voltage. Um, not past the like, because Vega 64s from the factory come with 1.35 volts of HBM voltage. And raising the voltage past that really doesn't seem to do anything. If you're on a Vega 56, then actually going up to 1.3, 1.35 volts will help you with HBM overclocking, especially if you have Samsung memory. Um, yeah, and you would just use, use the E2 uh, register. Actually, wait a minute, I have an idea. This is going to be like mega jank. Um... Get the multimeter out. It's it is totally legible. Um, yeah, there's just one issue with this. Uh, I don't know how I'm gonna get the probe onto the HBM VRM. Anyway, so, okay, there we go. We've got HBM voltage. And I am not going to write 10 to it. That is stupid. Um, 1.35, and if I give it an offset of 3, and my probe slipped. Anyway, like we're just going to write that, and I'm going to get the probe back on there. Now we should be at, like, 1.35 something. Yeah, 1.355. Bam! So, yeah. If I punch in a zero... Ah, this is so jank. And you can see the voltage comes down. So, yeah, so that's how you would control the HBM rail. Um, let's put this away. Uh, and the neat thing is, this actually works once you're in the OS. <laughs> So, like, I've just been demonstrating everything in the BIOS, but it does still work once you get into the OS. So, uh, also, all of the all of the registers wipe um, when you power down. 
and then power on again. So I'm just going to close the calculator at this point. So now if we go back to uh, E1, one, and we read it, you're going to see that it's 0, 0. Um, so there's no voltage offset right now, and we're going to get in. This card is, like, weird. And we're in. Lovely. Okay, so you can see our core voltage right there. Um, and we can read that, and yeah, zero, zero. And if I want more voltage, then we just punch in five, and we hit right, and bam, voltage goes up. If I want voltage down, um, I mean, right. Yeah, it's gonna, sometimes it's gonna fail. Oh, come on. There we go. Yeah, so that that's the thing is like, even if you're just writing or reading a single register, like we're doing right now, um, the driver is like, as I said at the start of the video, it's constantly talking to the VRM. So getting your commands through is not super reliable. And you might just have to like sit there and go like, right, right, right. And sometimes what can happen is um, if you try to write or read at the same time as the driver is writing and reading, uh, you can end up in a situation where it causes the like VRM controller to completely freak out and the card will just crash. So this is like, it's super janky. It's incredibly janky, but it like it works, you know, <laughs> like you can actually control the voltage with this way. And it's not as, uh, I mean, the alternative is to run a really janky di uh, feedback mod. Like, th there's just no good way to get proper voltage control on these cards. It's just like, you can do janky off, like, you can, you, you have the option of janky offsets through the read-write function of the EVC2, or you have janky feedback mods, because uh, this this uses a, v like, the, the feedback circuitry on this card is just like, it's a, it's a direct connection to the core. Um, so, yeah, this this is not great. <laughs> Like, the voltage control on, on these things is not great. Anyway, now you might be wondering, how do you connect the EVC2 to a Vega 64 or a Vega 56? And you do that like this. You have this header right here, J4003. Um, here's your PCIe slot for reference. So, yeah, it's on the back of the card. And the ground pin is this pin right here. So that's ground, and then the rest of the pins follow from that. Um... So yeah, you just need to get an EVC2, like solder a header to that, plug the EVC2 into that, and then, you know, go into the BIOS, do your find devices thing, and then you can just write directly to the E1 or E2 registers, where E1 is vCore, E2 is uh, HBM. So yeah, I, I think I'm going to put that in the description, which register is what, um, and also a link to the Elmore Labs uh, store so that you can pick up an EVC2. So, yeah, this is probably, like, the least terrible way of trying to control a Vega, in my opinion. I mean, th you could also do a feedback mod. Um, you could do that. I, I still don't particularly like doing those um, on, on Vegas, but, yeah, that's, that's, like, the only other option. So, yeah, and the neat thing is, like, this does still work in the OS. Um, like... I was experimenting with getting voltage control using like the Infineon USB 005 earlier and with that I had to set the offset before the OS loaded so like as the system was starting up you'd have to set the OS because once the OS was running it was like no way you're, you're not getting through the EVC2 as long as you're using the direct read write function it can still get through uh, all the traffic that the driver is creating um, most of the time at least um, so yeah that's um that's uh that's it. So thank you for tech to to tech power up for the the PCB picture that I used. Um and uh yeah, that's it for the video. So thanks for watching. Like, share, subscribe, leave any comments, questions, suggestions down in the comments section below if you'd like to support what I do here with uh actually hardcore overclocking. I have a Patreon. There's a link to that down in the description below. There's also the AHOC Teespring store where you can pick up shirts, stickers, posters, you know, the usual uh YouTuber merch. Uh, both help out immensely with running the channel, so if you check them out, that would be much appreciated. And uh, yeah, that's it for the video. Thanks for watching, and goodbye.